Welcome to the Tennessee Achieves Virtual Community Service Webinar. These webinars are designed to provide you, Tennessee Promise students, with an opportunity to learn more about college success tips, careers in your potential field of study, and other topics we think you will find interesting while you are navigating your educational journey. These webinars will also help you complete your community service requirement while it may be difficult for you to do so at this time. A few housekeeping details before we get started. By logging in as a Tennessee Achieve student, we are able to track your attendance and how long you remain actively engaged during the webinar. Once you complete the webinar, you will automatically be given credit for one hour of community service. We will track how long you watch, and if you do not watch the webinar in its entirety, you will not receive credit. You do not need to complete the community service form for these webinars. Tennessee Achieves will log your hours for you. Tennessee Achieves staff and partners across the state are providing important insight and information we think you will find entertaining and informative. We hope you enjoy this new series of webinars. I'm gonna turn it over to one of our staff members, Lexi Fiden, who has been with us for a couple of years now, and Lexi is gonna moderate this panel with our students. Thank you for being here, Lexi, and thank you all of our students for being here today. Well, thank you. So much, Graham. Yeah, we're gonna get started. So these are our current students that we have on our panel today. So we do have Logan, Madison, Rosalinda, and Dewan. And so we're just gonna go ahead and get this kicked off. Um, yes, again, my name is Lexi Fight and I'm a complete coach with Tennessee Achieves. So how about we start with Logan? I want you to go ahead and start if you don't care. Um, just kind of tell us where you're going to school currently, what your major is, and what your absolute dream job after college is. Well, currently uh, I am at Northeast State Community College. I've This is my second year there. Uh, the, the first semester, it was all on campus. So like, like the usual college stuff. Second semester is when COVID hit. So that like completely changed everything. Like the beginning I was at college, but then for the, the rest, I was online and that was a huge transition for me because I was used to being in class, doing things person to person, which is what I exactly love to do. But whenever things hit online, uh, I wasn't sure exactly what to do. But but through a lot but through a lot of prayer and through a bunch of help, I was able to I was able to get through and succeed. And because I was able to do online classes my second semester in the spring, this semester I am doing a hybrid situation, taking 19 credit hours, quite a bit, but I believe I can do it. Um, I'm taking four that are online and three that are on campus. That, that's what I mean by like a hybrid situation. And I, I'm completely enjoying being at Northeast, being able to do shows at Northeast, like being a cameraman, directing, doing interviews. I'm having an amazing time there. And I absolutely love it, love it there. And I'm absolutely humbled to be here. I just wanted to say that because it's, it's absolutely amazing that I've been chosen to do that. So yeah, that's so far my Northeast journey has been amazing. It really, really has been able to meet new friends, make new, meet new friends, meet old friends, just talk to people and just have an amazing time. I really, really have. Good deal. Good deal. I love that, Logan. Awesome. Um, Madison, would you like to tell us a little bit about, you know, where you're going to school, what you're majoring in or concentration and everything like that? Yes, I would love to. Um, my name is Madison Fowler. Um, I go to TCAT and Crossville. Um, I'm majoring in surgical technology. Um, um, one of my dream places to go work at would be either UT, uh, Park West, or Vanderbilt. Um, I want to do this for I don't know how long. Um, thanks to you guys, I'm now able to do that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm here almost every day, Monday through Friday. <laughs> Takes a lot of yeah. my time. <laughs> yes, for uh, sure. But yes, I'm doing a surgical technology program, which takes a lot of hard work and um, a lot of time out of my normal life um so to learn and cope and now cope with the COVID stuff it's, it's changed a lot but yeah yes. you're doing great I'm sure very very awesome um Rosalinda would you like to tell us where you're going to school your major and dream job after college yes um, hello, my I'm majoring in pre-dental hygiene and I'm currently attending uh, Cumberland University. And I actually just transferred from Ball State. So my first um, year of college, I was in Ball State and I really liked it. But I decided to come to Cumberland 
uh, to finish there and to get my bachelor's degree. And my dream career is to just really get into dental hygiene. Yeah, I love that. Very good answer, Rosalinda. And Dewan, would you like to finish us out with that question? Where are you going to school, major, and dream job after college? I'm currently at Jackson State Community College in Jackson, Tennessee. My major is general studies. And honestly, the reason why it's that is because my freshman year going into college, I really didn't know what I wanted to major in. So kind of just had to go with it for now until I figured out what I really wanted to do as a major. But yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. It's my second year. And so far, I mean, Jackson State, it's been a pretty good experience. You know, like Logan said, you know, with COVID coming around like the second part of the semester, it was kind of different because I was like, oh man, like, you know, we went to the campus like the whole part of the first semester and yeah. then you know, come like around like March, you know, COVID came, it was like, ooh, and we had to like change up everything. So it was kind of, it was kind of tough there for a minute, but you know, you know, I mean, everybody's getting used to it. It's, it was a change for everybody, but you know, for the most part, I hope everybody's been doing good and you know, with the online and fixing stuff, because that's what I'm doing. I'm taking flex. So all of, all of my classes, they're online, of course. And, you know, we have to do them through Zoom. But, yeah. Yeah. Good deal. I'm sure all of you are doing so good, despite all the situations that are happening in the world right now. But great answers. So excited for all of you. Um, let's go ahead and move into our next question. I just kind of want to know, are you guys working while you're in school? And if so, about how many hours do you work a week and kind of how do you balance that? Um, Logan, would you like to go ahead and answer that one? Uh, sure. Uh, I should have said this last, the last question because I didn't say exactly what I was majoring in. <laughs> but I, I'm majoring in PR advertising, which with, with that career, I can like do multiple jobs, like doing a commercial, directing, writing a script, doing a speech, preparing a speech, many, 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 many things. So it seems to be a very, very active job. Uh, this semester, I have been blessed to be able to get paid to go to college, which, uh, which I, I find is a huge, huge blessing. And so because of that, I'm not necessarily working at another job. Yeah. But if you want to think about it, college is my job. Yes. You think about sure. it, like, yeah, college is definitely a full time job for everyone. So that's oh, yeah. good though, that you're getting kind of that extra little backup to be able to support you while you're going through this and everything. Um, how about you, Madison? You you have like a full schedule. So I don't know, are you working at all during this? Uh sadly, yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've lived by myself since I was seventeen years old. Um, so I've had a you know, bounce back and forth from school and a job. So I've kind of gotten used to it. Um, I've been a server at Gondolier since I was 18. Um, so I work, I did work all the time every day before school had started. Mm -hmm. um, now where we've had to come in early and, you know, sometimes leave late, it's kind of been hard, but luckily I've been blessed with a great, great manager that works with my schedule as much as possible as he can and works with me. Um, here recently, I've worked around 25 to 30 hours a week, which is still really rough on me, but it's what I have to do. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. God has definitely blessed me with a good manager to help me a lot with there. Okay, good, good. I love that. Yeah, that's like a very big part of college. If you're going to school, like it is super important that you do have someone who's willing to understand like college is your first priority and kind of work with you on that. So I'm really glad to hear that. You guys are all hard workers. So Super awesome. Um, let's go ahead and move into our next question. I'm just wanting to know if you are the first person in your family to attend college or post-secondary in any way. Um, and if so, or if not, have you always planned to go to college or kind of what did that look like leading up? Um, Dewan, would you like to go ahead and start us off with that one? Well, being the fact I'm not a first generation college student, I mean, I would say, like, everybody in my family, they would, like, they would always tell me, you know, go to college, you know, don't just stop after high school. So they kind of, you know, gave me that motivation to keep going. Because honestly, at first, I really didn't know if I really wanted to go to college. Yeah. And they were like, no, you're going to go to college. Like, <laughs> you're not going to stop your education just because you, like, don't want to. They was like, just keep going. I mean, you got it. You know, my sister, she's in college currently, too. So, you know, she kind of 
gives me that extra, you know, motivation. She's like, you can do it. She's like, don't, you know, don't stop. It might get hard at times, but you you got this, little bro. Like, so, yeah, I just I just take advice. Like, we just give each other advice. You know, I tell her the same thing. I'm like, you know, just do all your assignments and stuff, and, you know, you'll graduate. We'll both get through it. Yeah, so, there you go. You guys are keeping each other accountable in that way. Yes, ma'am. I like that for sure. How about you, Rosalinda? Can you speak on, you know, if you were the first or if not either way, like kind of what that looked like planning to go to college? Um, I'm a first generation uh, college student from in my family. And I've always wanted to go to college. I've always, since I was little back in elementary, I've always wanted to go to college but I didn't know what to study for I just knew I wanted to go and my parents and my family were always encouraging me to think about it and to think about going into college so I can um, get a good job so I can get a, a, um, a good job and have a great future and not struggle a lot and so I've always in the back of my mind I've always wanted to I just didn't know what to major in and yeah 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 that's definitely I think a struggle that probably a lot of students have I know I had that same struggle when I was going to college you're not really sure what you want to do you just kind of figure it out along the way so I love that though um how about you Madison are you first generation what did your you know planning for college look like actually I'm not first generation um my sister went and uh went to Hiawassee before it had shut down and played basketball she had a partial scholarship on the basketball (laughs) (laughs) but um I always never really I knew what I had wanted to do before um which was like in middle school I've always wanted to do a uh, pharmacist or an ultrasound tech and then I'd found out about surgical technology and I was like, that's kind of both of them in one. Like, <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> Just, you found the best of both worlds. Exactly. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. Logan, what about you? Well, I am a first generation college student. And because of that, I guess it puts a little bit of respons- responsibility on me to be a really good college and Christian example to my two, to my two younger brothers because they're currently like in high school and middle school, at least I think in middle school. And, um, <laughs> and so uh, have, be, being able to be in college and be a really example to them and even to other family members, it's, it's, it's a real honor, re- responsibility that I, I honestly have enjoyed, like I said before, I, I loved being at college. It's been an amazing different experience, especially during COVID, but I've, I've absolutely loved it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, that is kind of a responsibility that you have, but I'm sure everyone's looking up to you and super proud of you. So that's a great responsibility to hold, I am sure. Um, All right, well, let's go ahead and get into our next question. This one's kind of more related to Tennessee Achieves. So talking about community service, everybody loves to do community service. Um, I had to do community service when I was getting Tennessee Promise and everything like that. So What's been your favorite, you know, community service opportunity that you've gotten to do while participating with Tennessee Achieves? Uh, Madison, would you like to go ahead and answer first? Yeah, sure. (laughs) Um, I love sports and I love being around kids. So I always went and either done concessions or took the money or anything at any kind of little league game. And if it was football, basketball, baseball, I just loved doing it and seeing a lot of people in my community because my community is like literally this big. Um, (laughs) So I love seeing everybody, all the regular good supporters of Oakdale. So I just love seeing everybody. So it was great. (laughs) Yeah, I like that. You got, you got, involved with the community no matter how small it was you got involved in everything that's great <laughs> Rosalinda how about you favorite community service opportunity that you've done uh so far it's job shadowing for dental hygiene I went to a family friend who's a dentist and I went to where he works and I got to see what, what he does and I got to see the dental assistant's job and the dental assistant hygienist job so I really got to see that all on first hand and to see if I really would enjoy it as much if I got into it to see if um if, if this job is right for me and this major is right for me and I really enjoyed it and I had really <coughs> fun doing it 
Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's definitely like a great way to get your community service hours done. You know, do something that you're interested in. If you're kind of like we were talking that in between space of like, what do I want to do? What do I want to major in? That's a really great way to kind of figure it out. So I, I'm yeah. glad you enjoyed doing that and it helped you kind of figure out that path and everything. Dewan, how about you? Well, my favorite one was job shadowing for natural gas, like people that use gas in their homes. So I kind of spent like the day, you know, learning how to read natural gas meters. It was kind of interesting because I never knew how to do that. Yeah. So I kind of learned a lot from doing that and, you know, checking people's gas, like gas meters, like how much gas they use within a month. So. Yeah, that's, that's like an interesting, you wouldn't have never done that unless you yeah, were doing something really, for community service, right? Right. So, cool that you got to kind of learn that and see that. That's awesome. Yes, ma'am. Logan, how about you, favorite community service opportunity? Well, my favorite community service opportunity, I did back in, uh, I believe, 2019. Uh, I volunteered at a nearby Bible camp called Bancroft's Bible Camp. And, and, I, and actually there, I met one of my college friends. Uh, but there, like we, we helped like lift mattresses, wood, and all and all that stuff. But I, I had such an amazing time because we not only helped, but we were cracking jokes, laughing, <laughs> having just having a fun time while doing community service at the same time. So that just goes to show you, even even like if you're doing like a job or something, you can still have fun and enjoy it. You know. Yes, yes. I love that you said that. You can make friends while doing community service. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be something you're just getting eight hours trying to get out of the way. Like you can honestly enjoy that time while you're doing that. So I'm glad oh, yeah. you had fun with that. That's super awesome. Good deal. Well, next question, we're gonna go ahead and move into what has been your most helpful or beneficial experience that you've had with Tennessee Achieves overall? Um, how about DeWan, you wanna go first? Uh, Tennessee Achieves has helped me in a lot of ways, but really to give you like the courage and motivation to keep going throughout like your college experience, where it's like, you know, need motivation or, you know, advice, they can really just help you with pretty much anything that you need. It doesn't matter like whether like you need help with, you know, I mean, it's just, it's a lot that they can help you with really. Like it's too much to, to go into detail, but I mean, really like uh, my completion coach is uh, Esther, and, you know, she, she messaged me like, I mean, I would say like every month or so, and, you know, she'll keep in touch with me, you know, make sure I'm doing good through my classes and stuff. And she's like, if you ever need help, you know, you can call me Tom, we can FaceTime. So yeah, like they help you a lot with that. Yeah. Keep in touch stuff, so. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're always here for encouragement, any advice you have. I'm very glad that that's been a very helpful part of Tennessee Achieves for you to one. Rosalinda, would you like to speak on your most helpful, beneficial experience with Tennessee Achieves? Uh, yes. Um, just like uh, Delon, I agree with everything you said. Um, there's so much detail and so much that they helped me with. Um, one thing I can say is that um, just because I've been like a first generation student in college because of my family, I didn't really know what to do and what the process and getting to college and how to get it ready with classes or anything like that. And so when Tennessee Achieves and my coach uh, from Tennessee Achieves stepped in, that really helped me a lot in keeping track on what the things I need to do and not be lost. And till this day, um, they've really been helpful with that and keeping track on things like FAFSA and putting my eight hours and reminding me of things to do. And in, it's just been really helpful. And I feel like I can always go to my Tennessee Achieves coach and ask anything or tell them anything and they will be helping me, be able to help me. Yeah, I love that, Rosalinda. Yeah, especially, I mean, college in general, there's so many moving parts, so many different things you have to do, and it can feel really overwhelming. And I'm sure, especially as a first generation, you know, it's kind of hard to navigate that. So I'm glad that that was a very beneficial piece for you, too. Um, Madison, how about you? Can you speak on, you know, helpful, beneficial part of Tennessee Achieves? Yes. Um, my, um, my person that was helpful to us, um, I think his name was Dalton, 
Mm-hmm. Um, he came in a lot and would have meetings with us as a class because my class was so small. Um, I had 42 kids in my graduating class to tell you how small <laughs> my, my school was. <laughs> so yeah. he would just get us all in the gym at one time and he, we would write down questions for him and our numbers and our emails, kind of like how he had said about how the, the, they would email him, tell him that we could FaceTime, anything they could do to help us in any kind of way, whether you were a first generation, if you were homeschooled, I mean, anyway, any way possible, they tried to get to you and help you. Um, I will say, even though I wasn't the first generation in my family, I really still needed help because I was by myself a lot of the way. Um, so they literally helped me through a lot because I was blinded. I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> especially when it came with FAFSA and what college accepted Tennessee Promise. Um, and it was just, it was a really, really, really helpful, helpful journey that I went through with you guys. It, um, they helped me with things that I didn't even think about that I needed. <laughs> so yeah, I love that. You don't, you can't think of all the things that college is going to throw at you and that you need to do. So I'm glad that you, you know, felt that support and like you had someone there that was going to help you through that process and everything. That's awesome. Logan, how about you? Well, with, T- with Tennessee Achieves, right, right before I started going to college last year, actually, yeah, around this time last year, T- Tennessee Achieves uh, really, really came to me and gave me some really, really good scholarship advice. Because I wasn't exactly sure, okay, which scholarship should I apply for? Which ones do I qualify for? I, I wasn't sure exactly what to do. And Tennessee, and Tennessee Chiefs really helped give me some really good advice on that and how on how to do it, on which ones to choose. And throughout, I, I mean, like, like the one said, my Tennessee Chiefs coach, Haley Rice, she she calls up on me. She texts me pre- pretty often to see how I'm doing and check up on me and to encourage me which as a college student, that there is really, really appreciated getting encouragement because things can get so, so stressful at college and just having someone there to encourage you like that, it's really, really good. And I'm really grateful for it. And, t- and honestly, with Tennessee Achieves, with the Tennessee Promise, many, many college students have to uh, use the Tennessee Promise in order to make it into college. I, like I said, I've been blessed to be able to pay, be able to get paid to go to college but Tennessee Promise for me is, is more of a backup which is, is it's good to have a backup you know it's, it's good to have a okay oops oh no I need help it's right there so Tennessee yeah. Chiefs has been really good to me for sure for sure I like how you kind of talked about that you know a lot of people don't realize all that's out there that they can apply for or that is available to them so I'm glad that you were able to get that help and everything so that you could Me have too. extra support <laughs> behind you yeah I'm sure you were too <laughs> Good deal. I love those great answers all around. Um, Going into our next question, what's been your most difficult hurdle in post-secondary? You know, how did you overcome whatever obstacle that you faced that you felt like was going to be like a monumental obstacle that you were going to have to overcome? Logan, can you speak a little bit on that? Yeah. Uh, Last semester, I had, I, I thought, I had applied for all of my classes right in the mm-hmm. summer, but turns out I only made like a, I don't know what it was, kind of like a calendar schedule thing. I don't know what it was. I think I don't even know what, what I did. But uh, when, whenever I first got to got there, my first week, whenever they did did my uh, like roll call, yeah. I wasn't on it, and that wasn't just the case for one class. That was the case with all of my classes. So I was wondering, oh my word, what in the world's going on here? And so I looked and talked with the uh, with the financial aid office at Northeast State. Talked to the uh, admissions office at Northeast State, and so, so I think some other one. And it turns out I had not applied for any of my classes. So I was like almost in a panic, say like, "Oh my word, what's going to happen?" <laughs> and so, but but what I was blessed to do, uh, I was blessed to still get the exact classes with the exact hours, exactly how I wanted it, except for one class, I did move the hours a little forward, but otherwise I got it exactly the way I wanted. I mean, God, God really worked that out for me. He really, really did. And I'm extremely grateful because that could have been a very serious situation. Good, yes, yeah. That I think that happens to a lot of people. I don't think you're alone in that. You know, something goes wrong in that process of registering for classes, but you did all the right things. You went and talked to all the right people. So I'm glad that that worked out as perfectly as it could have for you. That's very mm-hmm. 
often a uh, obstacle I think people face. So good. Sure. What about you, Dewan? An obstacle that you faced and how you overcame it? Well, before we came back for this semester, starting in August, my portal, my Tennessee Promise portal, or something like that, mm -hmm. somehow my school it got changed like MTSU. And Esther was like, Tennessee of Cheese and messing me talking about like your financial aid will be taken away because you don't have your correct school. So I was like going like crazy, like nuts, like what? Like how did it change? Like I didn't know what happened because like I haven't like I was like I haven't even been in my portal for that to happen. So I was kinda like, What? And I had to go back in there and Esther had to help me change it back to Jackson State, of course. So, you know, my financial aid could go towards Jackson State where I'm going obviously so yeah I didn't know I was just like oh my gosh I was like I gotta hear you get this change so yeah yeah I think I think that's it. another you know kind yes, of hurdle you know somehow yes, things get changed and then you're freaking out trying to figure out how do I get my scholarships and things to go where they need to be so I'm glad Esther was able to help you with that and you were able to get that all smoothed out and everything's great now, but yeah, yes, great, a hurdle. I think a lot of people have. So Rosalind, yeah. how about you? A hurdle in post-secondary and how you overcame that? Um, in my first year um, in college, in my first semester in the fall, um, I was having a little trouble with professors and they were just not, there was just one and it was biology and it was just the communication and then how he explained it was not the way um, I could not understand it. And I tried to get tutoring, but I couldn't find it. Um, and I asked around and I was getting stressed because I'm not doing really well in that class and I needed to. And so instead I was recommended to with, uh, drop that class and add another one. So withdraw from that and do another one so I can re-sign up for that class with another teacher next semester. And so that's what I actually, that's exactly what I did. And it's really helped me a lot. And with picking my professor for the next semester, um, I was told about rate my professor. And I never knew about it until that whole situation happened. And so I'm really glad I know about that now. Yes, yes. I, and I think that is kind of another common hurdle that students have is, you know, you are going to probably come across a professor who doesn't necessarily teach the way that you best learn. So you kind of have to figure out like, okay, do I need to go to tutoring? Do I need to get with a group in class? Or like your situation, you were able to drop that and add another class so you could take another professor. And sometimes that's, that's the case. That's your best case scenario. So I'm glad you were over, able to overcome that, but you did kind of go through different avenues until you were able to figure out how it was best, gonna best work out for you. So very, very good. Madison, how about you? Can you speak on a hurdle? Yes. Um, <laughs> at first I was really nervous about my job and working at the, uh, going to school at the same time and working um, and being able to pay the bills at home also. Um, Second was COVID. I thought it was going to interrupt everything. I thought we were going to have to push school, like the start day at school back. And I thought we, because we, this is a hands-on learning class. And I was like, there is no way I'm going to be able to, you know, learn all that, you know, over a computer. Because, you know, I am a hands-on learner. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like Logan had said, I like being face-to-face, -face, like person-to-person. -person. It helps out a lot. Um, but that was one of my main nerve-wracking things that I thought that I was never going to be able to overcome but luckily um, I have a great instructor she has tried to get all of our labs like our learning labs out of the way so when we do or if we go online earlier it won't be as hard so <laughs> yeah I like that yeah COVID definitely been a big hurdle for everybody I'm sure in some ways so but I'm glad everybody's been able to overcome those hurdles and everything so I think you guys are great examples of how to kind of go through that process when hurdles do arise because they definitely will you just gotta be able to get through them yes you guys have done awesome so good deal let's go ahead and get on to our next question um i love this question so what is one piece of advice that you would give to current high school seniors that you know that are about to start post-secondary um thinking back to like when you were a high school senior what do you wish you would have known then um, Rosalinda, do you want to start us off with that one? 
Uh, yes. Um, my advice uh, to the next students um, is to not be afraid to ask for help. I was very shy and embarrassed to, help, to ask for help. And so I thought I could do everything by myself. But when that did not work at a certain point, um, I finally was told I have to go and ask for help. It would help me a lot. And so I did, and it helped a lot. And so you can go and ask your professors or your Tennessee Chiefs coach or anyone that you think um, that you trust or you think that can help you in, that, in any situation. And it will make your life and your college experience much more easier. And for me, I've been very grateful to have Tennessee uh, Chiefs and my coach to help me um, with all those, with any situation that I have. Yeah, yeah, very good. That's a difficult lesson to kind of learn is it is okay to ask for help and you are going to need to ask for help sometimes. And there's definitely nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean you don't know what's going on or like something's happening with you that isn't happening with other people. A lot of the time, other people have the same question that you have. They're just too scared to ask it as well. So I think that's a great piece of advice. Madison, would you like to go? Um, my advice would be, um, you know, like she said, not to be scared to ask questions because you guys are more than more than helpful with a lot of things. Um, also to stay on top of your community service hours because days go by so fast <laughs> and you don't realize yeah. where, what day it is. And you're like, Oh no, my community service hours. Um, <laughs> because I was in a bunch of different clubs and I was in beta student count. I mean, everything. And, you know, I had to get hours for every single one of those. Yeah. And so, um, sometimes they wouldn't let you use the same hours you used for a different club. So I was, you know, I would forget, oh no, my Tennessee promise hours because Dalton would email me, hey guys, make sure you're getting your hours in. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot. <laughs> yes. So the hours were, was a big Anthony thing for me. So sorry. So the hours was a big thing for me. Um, and the asking the questions, not being scared to, um, I thought I had one more and I must've lost it. That, that got me. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I think definitely stay on top of community service, plug that in for sure. It's going to pop up before you know it. So I like that. You don't want to be doing the eight hours the day before they're due for sure. So <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great piece of advice for sure, Madison. Logan, how about you? Man, wh where do I start? There's so, there's so much, so many really good tips that seniors like, like need, like uh, stay on top of your work. Like e even though work makes it seem really hard and you don't want to do it or anything like that, you got to study, you got to do the work. I mean, like, I mean, who, I mean, I don't think anyone here would be able to say, oh, I absolutely love working. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think anyone would be able to say that, but you know, we, we have to do what we have to do. So just keep, keep on top of your work and keep on making them good grades. Because like what I was blessed to do, like in high school, I graduated with, with a honest degree, I almost forgot the word. And <laughs> um, because of that, and because I kept my grades up, I'm now able to be, to be paid to go to college. So if you keep your grades up while you're in high school and, and, even, and even before, if you can, you'll be able to even get paid to go to college and get so many other benefits that you would be able to do. But, right. but my, my number one advice always is to always trust in the Lord for everything, always. I love that, Logan. I think that's a great piece of advice for sure. But yes, staying on top of your work too. Very, very important. And especially when you get to college, it's going to kind of hit you all at once. So it's kind of good to get in those habits before. Like a reality. <laughs> yes, yes. I love that. Dewan, how about you? A piece of advice for current high school students? Well, the main one is make sure that you have your FAFSA done out of all things, because yeah. I would tell you, like, that's, like, the number one thing before you go to college that you want to have done, like, your FAFSA. Like, no matter whatever else, like, the FAFSA is, like, the main thing, because that's, yeah. like, how you get your money, all that, mm -hmm. and you got to make sure you go in detail, like, over everything, make sure it's correct because one little thing can mess it all up 
Like <laughs> one little mishap can mess it everything just bloomed down the drain. But yeah, I would say FAFSA, but you know, make sure that you have your classes registered on time before you know the deadline ends and stuff like that and your transcript is, you know, handed to the college so they can have that for whenever you get ready to go to college. But yeah, those are my those those are great pieces of advice. Um, yes, and wow. speaking of the FAFSA, the FAFSA for 2021-2022 opened on October 1st. So you do have to do that for Tennessee Promise. So Yes, fill it out. <laughs> fill out the FAFSA. I like that piece of advice for sure. Those were all great. Hopefully those will be helpful to someone. And I'm sure in your past selves, that would have been helpful for you guys to have been able to tell yourself. So yes, I, really, really good. Um, going into the next question, just, I can't, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but what is an example of your biggest inspiration through college? You know, whether it's been with Tennessee Achieves, whether it's been someone in your college career who has been an inspiration to you or someone in your family, who might that be for you? Uh, Madison, would you like to go first? Um, yes, uh, my sister actually would be a big inspiration for me. Um, they actually dropped her major at Hawassi. So she had to completely start over because none of her credits would transfer over. So she has been my biggest inspiration. Uh, she also had a um, child that mm -hmm. changed a lot also. Um, not only she wasn't just a natural healthy child, she had a lot of heart defects. Um, the doctors have told her, you know, she's probably not even gonna live past not even six months old. But God completely healed her. She is also another one of my biggest inspirations, my, motiv my motivation, and uh, showed me how that not every day is, you know, given. It's not always going to be there. And, you know, just God completely healed her. And for, for me to be able to see that makes me just realize how blessed I really am. So that's my biggest motivation is my sister and my niece because mm -hmm. they have changed everything the way I look at everything the way I work harder my just my life in general they have changed in every single way and so I also want to be a role model for my niece to look up to also yes I love that I like how you said that yeah. you know not every day is given and also not every day is perfect not every day is going to go exactly as you plan so it's definitely like rolling with those punches and everything so I love that. And I'm sure your sister and your niece are so proud of you. So that's awesome. Rosalinda, how about you? Your biggest inspiration through college so far? Um, my biggest inspiration is actually seeing my cousins, my older cousins going to college. Um, I have one, um, one cousin that's going into law school and just seeing her and keeping at it even though it's stressful and I can see that at times, but she really like pushes forward and that really makes me want to um, be like her and push through and all the obstacles that I face in college. And my motivation is my siblings. I have five siblings, I'm the oldest. And so I'm wanting to set an example uh, to my siblings that, um, if you if they wanted to go to college um it's they can do it and nothing's impossible and things like that and i really they're my motivation yeah i love that you so you have your older cousins who you know you're kind of looking up to them kind of watching them and knowing that you can get through this because they're getting through it but then also you do have that piece where you know you feel like you have this responsibility to show your younger siblings what you can do and that they can do it as well so I love that, Rosalinda. Very, very good. Dewan, how about you? Inspiration, motivation, college? I would have to say my aunt. She was pregnant at a young age whenever she first started college at TSU in Nashville. And so, you know, she kind of had a rope carrying around my little cousin and stuff while she was going to college. But now she's a RN, I think. I think that's what she is. Yeah, she's an RN now. Uh, one of the hospitals up there in Nashville. So I look up to her as one of my inspirations because, you know, I'm pretty sure that wasn't easy on her, you know, going to college and carrying my little cousin around in her stomach while she was, you know, in school. So, but she, she got through and she graduated with her degree. So 
Awesome. So that that kind of pushes you like I I can do this. She did this. I can. Right. So I love that. Awesome. I think that's awesome. Logan, how about you? I say my biggest inspiration has been my parents because even even when I was in high school, uh, throughout my high school and middle school years, I was unfortunately bullied over uh, weight and not being as good in basketball. I, I, I joined basketball in high school just for fun and sports and all that. But throughout it all, my mom, my mom and dad really, really encouraged me and helped me and helped me to overcome that through through them giving me advice and tell them tell me to pray and ask the Lord for help. And God's the one that that really brought me through. And even throughout my throughout my college year and even right now, my mom and dad is right is right behind me and complete, completely supporting me. And uh, even, and my and my mom, I ask, I ask her questions for her to help me, and she's she she's right there to help me. So I, I'd say my biggest inspiration is definitely my parents. They've they, they've they've loved me and they've helped raise me to who I am now. And I I know that they're really proud of me. And I'm really really thankful for them. I really thank God for them. I love that Logan. I'm sure your parents are incredibly proud of you. So I'm sure that would make them so happy to hear that. So. Very, very awesome. And all of you guys are awesome. So you are inspiring so many people yourself. So you have all these people that you are inspired by, but you're also inspiring others all over. So you should be very proud of yourselves. Um, going into our next question, we kind of talked a little bit about this already, kind of touched on our, you know, complete coaches and whatnot. But if you could just tell me a little bit about your experience with either a Tennessee Achieves Complete Coach or your Tennessee Achieves Mentor, and just kind of an example of how they've been helpful to you. Um, Dewan, would you like to go ahead and go? Well, me and Esther keep in touch, like I said earlier. So me and her, we keep in touch a lot. You know, we talk to each other. You know, I tell her any problems that I have with, you know, my college experience and stuff like that and she's like oh you know well I mean everybody has struggles but you know you can get through them so she kind of gives me that extra boost of confidence and you know encourages me to keep pushing forward and don't look back at the negative just think about all the positive that's ahead you know or I can graduate and stuff yeah yeah I like that yeah I think that's a good piece of advice too you know don't think about what's in the past that's that's all right gone, hey. gone and done so let's mm -hmm. just and move forward so I like that a lot Rosalinda can you speak on a complete coach or mentor and how they've been helpful to you uh yes um I'm really grateful for my coach I don't remember most of my mentor but I do think I do remember a little bit that they're very helpful with things like FASA and things like that um with my coach um it's I see her, like I talk to her or interact with her more. And so she was, she has been really helpful and I've really been grateful for her. She's like a best friend to me, like a, like someone that I can go to and tell her all of my uh, problems or the things like, oh, I did it. I actually got into this college that I wanted. And she's like, yay. And things like that. She really encouraged me and motivated me to do uh, the things I need to do. And she's really helped me a lot through my college experience. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's nice to have somebody to celebrate like those big moments with. So I'm glad that you were able to go to her and kind of have that, that moment and stuff. So that's really, really awesome. Madison, how about you? I actually um, had problems with my FAFSA uh, where I'd lived by myself. You know, I couldn't really say that my parents and either one of them had claimed me. So I didn't really know what to do in that situation. I went to my guidance counselor at school and my, we have this thing called a career coach at our school also. Um, she didn't really know what to do. So I had to call up Dalton <laughs> and ask him, you know, like, what is the best way to do this to help me out? You know, and that was also one of my biggest fears, you know, is not even getting to go to college because I can't afford it or I won't be able to afford it one day to pay back my loans that I'm going to take out. So luckily I actually get money back to help me, you know, cause I don't get to work every day. So, you know, that's something else that they have helped me. That's another example, a, a prime example of how much, you know, that is, that has helped me along the way so far through college. Yes. <laughs> yes no, I love that. And that's kind of that process of, again, of like, you know, you don't really know who to go to for things. So I'm glad that you can, you know, definitely have somebody that you can go to for just an overall support, you know, 
regardless of if your Tennessee Chiefs coach knows exactly how to, they can definitely find you the right person too. So I think that's awesome, Madison. Logan, how about you? Well, my Tennessee Chiefs coach, Haley, uh, I, I wasn't introduced much to Tennessee Chiefs until about my, I think my senior or junior year of high school and then really didn't get too involved until uh, after I graduated high school, which was, a, which was an amazing feeling. Uh, but uh, afterwards and even up until now, like I stated earlier, Haley Rice, she's, she's been calling me, texting me, even emailing me. She's she keeping me up to date. She's been really encouraging me, check, checks up on me to make sure I'm doing all right. And, and, with, and with that, she's given me some really good advice and Tennessee Chiefs as well. She's given me some really good advice on, on study habits, how to manage your time well, and uh, even even more. And it's, it's really good to, to stay um, pretty involved with, ten, with Tennessee Chiefs to make sure you get all the announcements like, okay, this is when the community service hours are due, this is when the FAFSA is due, and everything like that. So they... So y'all, y'all really keep us up to date and encourage us and things like that. And we, we really appreciate it as students. I love that. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure time management right now is something you're really focused on too with classes being a little wonky. So I'm glad that that's been helpful to you in that way. And then real quick, uh, one more question from me. Um, what is one lesson that you learned in your first job? And some of you might like still be in your first job and that's okay, but what's one lesson that you've learned from your first job? Dewan, would you like to go? Hard work and teamwork means everything. Because mm-hmm. my first job, I worked at like a lumber yard and you can only imagine like picking up a lot of boards in the day, like hard working that is. And I would say, like, it took a lot of teamwork and, you know, communication, you know, to, you know, get, like, orders and stuff out. But it was it was a lot. But, I mean, one of the lessons I learned is, yeah, you got to communicate. You got to be able to play as a team, you know, and be able to have that, you know, determination and motivation to keep going. No matter how hard it gets, you just got to keep pushing. Yeah, I love that. Teamwork's very important just to take with you throughout life. And I'm sure even you guys who haven't necessarily had a job or anything like that or had one through college, you've definitely been working in groups. You've definitely had to learn how to work with other people a lot. So I'm sure that's been a good lesson learned too that you're going to be able to take with you. Madison, do you have, you know, something you learned from your first job? Yes, um, I've actually learned that you're not really going to get along with everybody. Um, You're not always going to have, you know, that good teamwork that you need, you know, or the, you know, just really positive um, vibes coming from everybody. You're not always going to have that. So, you know, the biggest lesson I've learned was just put a smile on your face and just do you and do the best you can do at, you know, what you're there to do, whether you're making money or whatever you're doing which I hope you would be making money at a job, but you know, <laughs> you know, um, that's what I've always had to learn uh, is always keep a smile on your face and do what you have to do for you, whether it's benefiting them or not, you know, cause you're there for you. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You're definitely not going to always mesh perfectly with everyone you come across in life. So I think that's really, really great. A lesson that you've learned and kind of advice to take too. And I like how you said, keep a smile on your face, even if someone else isn't giving off all the positive vibes, at least you can give off the positive vibes. So I think that's awesome. Um, Well, you guys did so great. I'm going to let Graham come back in, see if we have any questions that he might have from our attendees for us. So. Yeah. Well, first I want to thank all of you guys for being here today. And a lot of the comments that we're getting from our audience today are Um, thanking you for being here, thanking you for being um, someone that our other students can look up to, and and they're all wishing you a lot of luck and success. So I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, that the feedback from the audience has been extremely positive. So thank you all for being here. Uh, We did have a question. um, This was asked of Logan, but I think any of you guys can jump in here. Um, How do you manage your time between school and then kind of your leisure time? (sighs) I bet you the person who asked that was my was my mom, and she told me she was going to ask that. <laughs> mom is watching and is engaging. He wants to know your answer to that one, Logan. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, having nineteen credit hours is is a huge workload, and I've been ha- I'm I'm still trying to 
completely figure out, okay, how am I going to manage this class with this test, with this project, with maybe trying to have some leisure time and everything like that. And I've, I've to be honest with you, I've, I've struggled with being able to manage my time. Uh, but uh, I believe that through that through prayer, and as long as I keep keep right on top of things, I believe that I can manage my time better. And I believe that I can keep on making better and better grades, and just continue to do well. Anybody else want to add to that? All right, we got a couple more questions. Did any of you take? college classes the summer right after you graduated and if so would you recommend it or maybe if you didn't would you recommend that maybe students consider that um oh you can go you can go <laughs> Madison. <laughs> um I was trying to wait to even make sure that wouldn't happen and I guess we both kind of just waited at the same time <laughs> but um I kind of um if my graduation wouldn't have been pushed back all the way to July for COVID then I would have had like a very tiny break between. Um, I started, like I said, um, it was a, it's a 12 month class. So it's a year class. So I started in July and I'll end in July. In my opinion, I think it's great to go ahead and get a great head start. So you don't have to be there as long or, you know, maybe the classes won't be as full. Maybe you can go ahead and take them ahead of time because I think it would be easier and, you know, wouldn't be as hard to get in the classes that you want later on whenever everybody else is going there too. Sure. Do you want to um, yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, I would say like to any student, if they want to, you know, get a head start on college, you know, you can, but some students that I feel like they do better, you know, starting when everybody else starts as an incoming freshman, but you know, you have those few students, you know, they, feel like they can start ahead and do good as well. But really, I would say that's really just a decision that you have to make on your own. You know, couldn't, I mean, can't nobody else tell you when to start. You know, that's just something you got to, you know, find for yourself. And, you know, if you feel the need to start ahead, you know, you can start ahead. But if not, then, you know, just start and everybody else does. So. We've got another couple of questions about working with your mentors. So how about this? What, what advice do you have for the Tennessee Achieves mentors um, as they are working with both students in high school and college? And how would, what, what would you say your mentors need to do to get students to engage? Sometimes we hear from mentors that it's hard to get the students to respond. What, what advice do you have for our, our mentors? Hmm. That's, that's, that's a good question. Uh, with, with, with the mentors, uh, honestly, the only advice I would have for them is, is just keep on encouraging. Keep, keep on trying to help those you are helping and continue to give the advice that you need to. And uh, I, I guess that's it because they, they do, I mean, y'all do an absolutely amazing job Y'all really do, but to but to get students to cooperate more, I'm not exactly sure because some people like if you ask them a question, sometimes they're like, "Oh man, I'm not I'm not gonna answer this." I mean, this is just this is nothing. I mean, it's just, it's not a big deal. So I I guess it, it's to uh, maybe to encourage them to respond. Maybe be like, if if you like if you like this or you have anything, to ask us, please respond or something like that. Like I guess that would be, but other otherwise. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Anybody else? I've got a question for you guys since we've got a few more minutes here. What's your favorite part about being a college student? What's your what's your favorite thing about being in college? The freedom compared to what, <laughs> compared to right. what we got in high school. It's just the freedom. Um, mm -hmm. And I will say another thing too, um, <clears throat> being in college, you get treated as an adult. In high school, you kind of get treated more as a kid, but, <laughs> but I do like the respect line between the instructors and the students. Um, like I said, in high school, it's a little different. Um, but other than that, I get to learn about what I'm wanting to do for the rest of my life. Like, I'm sorry to say this, if there's any high school teachers out there watching, but I'm not. <laughs> 
going to use geometry for what I'm going to school for <laughs> or you know, whatever else we're, we're doing, you know, that I'm not going to use, you know, or history. I'm not going to use history in my, in what I'm going to school for. That's another plus is that I'm one step closer to doing what I want to do for the rest of my life. So. Yeah. Feel a little bit more in control of your life kind of now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Oh. Definitely. <laughs> I would definitely say being around people too of different ages and different backgrounds and stuff because not everybody in college is the same age you got people that are like in their 30s and 40s that are still trying to go and get a degree so it's kind of different being around people that's older than you and have children and stuff and that could be like <laughs> yeah. your mom but you know it's just one of those things you just kind of have to get used to because you know it's college I mean everybody's there for a reason is to get one thing which is a degree so Mm-hmm. Exactly. They 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 choose to be there to go towards the career that they choose to. Right. And I I have absolutely loved the hands on experience at college, like being able to work doing it, like camera work. I think tomorrow I'm going to be uh, to be interviewed for like a college assignment. Uh, being able to do like sound stuff, being being able to be part of a club. Like I'm part of the uh, Toastmasters club. We haven't really been able to do too much because of COVID. But during my first semester. Uh, I was able to do speeches. I absolutely love talking in front of people. So that there gave me some more experience to be able to do that. And I've, I, I, I love the environment at Northeast State Community College. I'm sure you all enjoy the environments that are at your all's college. Because it, it, seem, it seems to be like, like kind of a welcoming environment. Like, welcome. You belong here, you know? So it's, I absolutely love college. It's, it's an amazing experience. It really, really is. See, I agree. Um, at TCAT, our president, he is awesome. I love him. He is such a funny, happy-go-lucky, and he is so encouraging, and he wants he wants everybody to do the best they can. You know, he when we had our very first day, we came in, and we had an orientation day, and he got all the people out of my class. You know, he does it by class, of course. You know, like, you don't want everybody all in there at once because, you know, COVID. Mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, we went in there, and we were spread apart, and He, you know, he was telling us, you know, like, it was crazy how, how excited he was, like how much energy he was, like he had, you know, he just wanted us to be there so bad to do what we wanted to do. And, you know, we have a great instructor here and she's the same way. She comes in, she's fired up, she's ready. like, Like Logan said, they're just so welcoming. And, you know, we've all parted in and said that, you know, like it's the different cultures you see, the different people, the different age groups, you know, it's not just all the same. It's not the same thing every day, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's something else that's awesome about it. Yeah. It makes it exciting. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I agree with everything. Um, Just for me, for meeting so many people, like from students to professors, so many good people and I feel like every single day I'm learning something new about myself. And so what I don't like, what I really, really like doing, what I need to work on a little bit more and what I'm good at, things like that. And also just seeing and making my parents proud while doing this whole experience and um, do hands-on and going to campus and things like that and just enjoying my whole college experience. And at the same time, making my parents proud. for all the work that they have um, done for me and all the sacrifices they've done for me. And so making them proud has been my favorite. That's awesome. I think that takes us to about time. I want to thank you all for being here. Lexi, you want to wrap us up? Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys so much. You guys were so awesome. And we're so proud of you at Tennessee Achieve. So you guys are doing so great. And thank you all so much for joining us and Here's to another 100,000 students. <laughs> Thank you for letting me have the opportunity to be on here. <laughs> yes, yes um, thank, thank, thank you all so, so much. This means a whole lot to me. Really, thank you. Yes, thank you. No problem, guys. Okay, have a great day. Thank you all so much again. Bye. All right, bye. Thank you for watching this installment of the Tennessee Achieves Virtual Community Service Webinar. Your attendance will be automatically recorded and your one hour of community service is being credited to you. Please click submit on this screen to ensure that your attendance is recorded for you.
For this community service opportunity, you will not need to complete the community service form. We hope you found this opportunity to be engaging and informative. Please watch more of this series by visiting www.tnachieves.org. We hope you have a great day. Thank you.